folks, and welcome back to another Pinal Prep Spotlight brought to you by Jones Ford Buick GMC, your hometown dealer for more than 50 years. As we did last week, we gave you guys our top three picks in baseball. We're going to do the same this week, but it's going to be for softball. Uh, naturally, you guys know, super excited about this. So kicking things off, David, what are your top three teams to watch? Yeah, I'm going to start right at the top with the top three, and I think it's pretty safe to say that this team is the unquestioned, you know, top team in Pinal County right now for so far, and it's the Dust Devils from Santa Cruz Valley. I mean, this team is built around youth, and they have been built around youth for a long time, and this team, like, they use youth to their advantage. A lot of their big performers are these younger classmen, like Tatiana Reyes, who came out of her freshman year last year, had a great campaign, and now she's going into her sophomore year looking to develop that even more but you know th this team is still loaded and, and it's, it's it's everywhere they're really balanced they got girls who are more experienced like Raylan Tarango who's a senior for them and just a lot of great guys like uh, Isabella Davis as well she's been uh, doing, doing really good for this team so far in her year so this team is still I think one of the top contenders for a spot in 2A but the question is going to become what happens after the regular season? We've seen them perform really well in the regular season and seen them get to the position they want to be in, but when they get to the playoffs, things can start getting a little bit rattled for them. They they face teams that are not usually to, uh, used to facing. They face a little bit of, of a step up in competition, so it's really going to depend on how they can you know rise to that occasion and, and, and kind of cement their legacy. Uh, Andrea James is one of the best coaches of softball in Pinal County, and I think she's going to continue her legacy with this team. And I, I think she she's... Every year she wants to win the title. She thinks every year they have a chance to win the title, and I think this year is no different, and they're going to stop at nothing to achieve their goal, and I really like what they're doing so far. And even if it's not this year, this team is still loaded and is still well set up into the future to have success. So I think they're still going to be a top contender. We're just going to have to see what happens if they can continue to get on a good hot streak and get to get a good position in the playoffs in two way. But then, you know, moving on to, uh, I want to put these, I don't want to necessarily put these in a particular order. These are just two more teams that I like right now. And the first one is going to be Maricopa. Uh, Maricopa has been, you know, they, they, they've been they a name for themselves. They're one of our higher, re, uh, higher conference teams and they face a lot of tough teams out there, but they can hold their own and they're really strong, talented. And I think it starts with the two Etzel sisters, uh, Emma and Alyssa. They do really well together. And I think they're going to be big pieces of this team going forward. Uh, they're well coached. Dugan is a great coach out there for them, and uh, they had a really good chance. They had a really tough game, and I believe the first round of the tournament last year, but just couldn't get it done against a really tough team. So they're going to continue to try to rise up to the occasion and kind of continue to cement their legacies in that uh, 6A, 6A region. So it's going to depend on what they can do from here. And then moving forward, I, it's Post and Butte. I, Post and Butte is also a really good team. They had a good performance last year, but things just kind of crumbled for them in the playoffs a little bit. But, you know, they lost one Westover, but they still have one in Kimberly. Kimberly Westover is doing really well for them. She's their catcher right now. Only a sophomore, so she's really come into her own in her younger years, and is going to continue to get better and better. She's off to a hot streak right now so far uh, this early season. She's batting 636, and she's already hit a homer out, so she's doing really well, and she's going to continue to be uh, an offensive cornerstone, but also really lead a pitching staff that is super important at the catcher position. So, she's going to be a big piece them going forward and these three teams are going to make some noise i really expect them to kind of continue to to plant the, the pinal county flag when it comes to softball and we're going to have good times to seeing them so it just depends on what they can do this year and if they can kind of build around their, their their stars and be well-rounded teams and move forward in the playoffs we'll see what happens so my top three are essentially david's top three here <laughs> but the thing for me is all all three of these teams are really good at hitting my question is once region play starts once the competition competition starts getting tougher for them how are these pitchers going to be able to handle it because that's my question for all three teams is can these pitchers handle the pressure on the bigger stages when it counts I'm looking at post and butte very young pitching pitching staff here with um annabelle Sa uh sauber Haley Lopez and freshman Brooklyn Trejo. So far, Post Butte has only played five games. They are four and one uh, so far. These three pitchers have combined for 28 innings pitched, uh, 38 strikeouts. Lindsay, uh, not Lindsay Lopez. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's the sister. My mind's still there. But uh, Haley Lopez has thrown 14 innings, and then this freshman in Brooklyn Trejo, six innings pitched, no hits so far, three walks, 12 strikeouts. Uh, if this post mute pitching staff can develop as the season goes on and better their game, then hey, they're going to be in a very good position, not just this year, but for the future because they are so young. A uh, pretty similar case with Maricopa, though. Uh, they're the team that have kind of played the most games out of all our Pinal County teams because they have uh, done a couple preseason tournaments here and there. So, so far they have 13 games. They are 9-3-1. and one. 
And uh, Emma Etzel, a senior for Maricopa, she is rocking a 3.44 ERA right now, a 7-1 and record in 11 appearances so far, 40 and two-thirds inning pitched. Uh, this is a high number for Maricopa already because this is pretty much their turnaround season. The past couple of years have been a downer for the Rams, but they really managed to figure things out last year, and this year they're just continuing to go on a roll. For Santa Cruz, Again, my question comes down to pitching. Uh, Raylan Tarangle has pretty much been their ace her, her whole career. Helping her out in the circle this time around is freshman Layla Brown. Uh, for Tarangle, so far just 13 innings pitched in Santa Cruz's four games. She has given up just one run, two walks, and ten strikeouts. Now, the thing for Santa Cruz is they're not big on striking out uh, their pitchers, you know, and the thing here is if you have a good ground ball pitcher, then you need a stellar defense, and Dust Devils do have that right now. So far, the team has a .962 fielding percentage, just four errors. Like David mentioned, once the postseason comes around, everything needs to be clicking for them. Their offense, or their defense, and their pitching, which kind of tends to be their Achilles heels uh, for the Dust Devils here, you know. They do well in that early game, whether it's a playing game or a first-round game, but then later on, as, as the competition gets tougher, something happens. Uh, and being out there earlier in the se um, earlier this, a couple weeks ago, the, the season is still young, but uh, talking to assistant coach Richie Reyes, he mentioned that last year they had the potential to go all the way. It's just... Uh, they kind of lost focus in that one game they lost, and that's why they, they were bounced out of the tournament. So everything needs to be there for them uh, mentally, physically. Just all these pieces have to come together that go beyond just what is your ability in the batter's box and on the field. Um, David, is there anything else you want to add? Yeah, I want to make a quick note about uh, the regular season when it comes to strength of schedule. You know, a lot of these teams don't see a lot of big competition, so they can do great things in the regular season, but when they get to the postseason, they're facing teams they've never seen before, and they're facing teams that can easily eat them up if they're if their pitching and defense is not on it. So I'm glad you brought up pitching, because pitching is going to be huge for these teams. All these teams can hit the cover off the ball, but it really depends on can you limit runs from being scored on you. So these pitching and defensive staffs are going to have to be at the top of their game and they're going to have to step up to that level of competition when they get to it or if they get to it so it's really going to come down to that the regular season is one thing but you have to be able to kind of do it all do it all in the postseason if you want to win so that's going to be the big question going forward we'll see how they do in the regular season and we'll be ready for the playoffs if they get there all right and that does it for this episode of pinal prep spotlight be sure to tune into the pinal central for all of your spring sports coverage